right, seventh grade, lesson 99. This one is on the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, now, there was a mathematician, and you may have studied him in science, um, named Pythagoras, okay? And he came up with this theorem, um, and I'm going to show you what that is, but this, their, the culture and the people that he was with in that time thought it was so amazing that he came up with this that they made his own stamp for him, <laughs> okay? So they made him a stamp and like, woo, way to go Pythagoras, okay? So anyway, all right, the Pythagorean theorem is this. Draw you a triangle on your paper. Okay, now it has to be a perfect square, so I'm going to go and draw a perfect square in that corner. Okay, now what the Pythagorean theorem says is this. Okay, let's say this was three feet, this was four feet, and this was five feet. Pythagoras said that if I took the square of three, so three squared would be what? Nine. Okay, and so what he was saying was, let me show you. Whoops, that's not so pretty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The square that's on um, this leg or this side of the triangle plus the square that's on this side. Do you remember what this one was? This one was four, this one was three. So then four squared would be what? 16, right? So there would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15, 16. All right? And now let's do a square right here that's 5 squared, which is... Okay? 5 squared is... 25. 25. So what Pythagoras was saying was this, three squared, this, this side right here, squared, plus this side squared will always equal this plus this will always equal this. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This plus this will always equal this. So nine plus 16 equals 25. So Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, a is just one of these legs, b is just one of these legs, and c is always this tilted or slanted one that's across from the 90 degree angle. You see that? Mm -hmm. So C is always this line. It's across from the 90 degree angle. Okay? So, you need to write this down. This was his theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right? So let me show you this using these numbers, 3, 4, and 5. Okay? This side is A. Now, I could have chosen this as A, but you can choose A, B, or A, B. Doesn't matter, okay? So, A is 3, so A squared would be 3 squared, plus B is 4, 4 squared, equals, um, and let's try to figure out what it equals, okay? So, um, we will, let's go ahead and put a 5 squared, since we know it's 5, Okay? So, again, 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9. 4 squared, 4 times 4 is 16. 5 squared is 25. Am I right? 9 plus 16 is 25. Yes, I am. So this is his theory that he made up, that the square of any number plus the square of another number will always equal the, the adding of these two up. Okay? So that's his theorem. So let's try some um, without all these squares around it because it kind of looks confusing. Okay, so here we go. Here's the first one they give us. All right, and they give me six centimeters and eight centimeters. And they want to know what C is. You see that? Mm -hmm. If this is six centimeters and this is eight centimeters, well, then how long is this? 
That's what we're trying to discover. So we use the Pythagorean theorem to answer this, which is what? 6 squared okay. plus six squared 8 squared plus the answer. Wait, 6 squared plus 8 squared. 8 squared equals C squared. You still have to square everything. Got it? All right, so 6 squared is 6 times 6, 36. 8 squared is 8 times 8, 64. And we don't know what C squared is yet. Okay, mm -hmm. so we just keep bringing down the letter. All right, what is 64 plus 36? 100. Okay, C squared equals 100. So stay with me. I'm going to move this up top. C squared equals 100. That's our answer so far. But I don't want to know the answer for C squared. I want to know what is just C. Okay. Okay? So what is C? What squared will equal 100? 10. 10. So C equals 10. Got it? So we would have put a 10 here. All right? Now, there's another way I want to teach you how to do this. Okay? So stay with me. In order, do you remember when um, I taught you to move things across the equal sign and it changes things? Mm -hmm. Okay, do you know what the opposite of squaring something is? Cubing it? C kind of, getting close. Square rooting it. Uh, For example, 8 squared is the same thing as square root of 64 is 8, and then 8 squared is 64. You see how they're opposites? It's called an invert. It in, it's an inverse, invert um, equation. Okay? So watch this, Eli. So in order for me to get rid of this 2, this squared up here, I move it across the equal sign so that I can get the C by itself. I move the squared across the equal sign so that I can get C by itself. And when I move it across the equal sign to get rid of it, what happens to it? What's the opposite of this? Uh, square root. Square root. See how I did that? So I moved my 2 square over across the equal sign, and then I had to do the opposite of that, which is that. So C equals the square root of 100. And the square root of 100 is 10. See how I answered that? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's do the second example. Okay, now that you're kind of getting the hang of it. All right, example 2 says this. In this triangle, find A. Now, up to this point, we've been finding C, but now they're wanting us to find A. All right? This is the hypotenuse. These are the legs or the sides. So we're going to say A squared plus B is 12 squared equals, and then we actually know our C, 13 squared. See how everything's squared? And I put A, B, and C. Okay? So it really makes sure that when you're doing these, you're not going, oh, okay, I'm going to do 12 squared plus 13 squared equals C squared. And then you forget, oh, wait a minute, that is my hypotenuse. And it can't be a B or an A. It has to be the C. All right, so now stay with me. A squared, we can't do anything with that, so we just leave it. 12 squared is 144 equals 13 squared is 169. Got it? So what should I do now? What do you think? Because I'm trying to answer for that. Hmm. Remember from previous lessons, think. Can you divide it? Getting close. Right now, I want to get A squared by itself. Oh, you move the other one over. But it's to with the this plus 144, right? Yeah, you move it to the other one. So I'm going to take plus 144, move it across the equal, and it becomes minus 144. Okay? And then 169 minus 144 is going to be 25. So then A squared equals 25. Now, do you remember how to get A by itself? Because right now I've got a square and I don't need that. No. Yeah? Remember what's the opposite of squaring? Just like the opposite of plus 144 is minus 144, the opposite of squaring is square rooting. So when I moved it across the equals, it did this. Yeah. You, are you with me? Mm -hmm. That kind of makes sense? So now I get A by itself. A equals square root of 25. And what is the square root of 25? 5. Got it? 
-hmm. Isn't that cool? So whether you get the A or the B or the C, you can always figure out the answer by doing the Pythagorean theorem. All right? Now, this next one that I'm going to do is um, going to try to trick you. So pay attention to see if you can catch what their trick is. Okay? All right, this is their little um, drawing. All right, how am I going to set this up? Now, here's what it tells me to do. Find the perimeter. What is perimeter? Do you remember? It's the distance around Distance it. around. Okay, so it's actually a two-part problem. So they're wanting you to find C, but they don't want you to stop there. Then they're wanting you to find the perimeter. So then you'll go back and go 3 plus 4 plus whatever C is. Now, we did this one earlier. Do you remember? And do you know what C is? C was 5. Remember that? 3, 4, 5. That was the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, what is the perimeter? 5 plus 4, 9, 10, 11, 12. You, if you would have put your answer to 5, you would have been wrong. Because they're not just asking for that. They're asking for the perimeter. Okay? 12 would have been the answer. All right. Last problem and you're done. All right. Copy... Um, yeah, I'm not going to do the running of that. Okay, so that's lesson 99.